welcome back to my video series documenting my Overland trailer build. This is the fifth video in the series. In the previous video, I covered how I clad the trailer with aluminum skin, um, put trim on it, and painted it. In this video, I'm going to cover how I put the ele basic electrical system in the trailer. Um, that includes the connection to the Jeep, a seven pin connector, and the wiring that goes back to the taillights and to the brakes. If you haven't seen the other videos in the series, I'd recommend starting with video one. I will put links in the description to all the videos in the series and also to articles on ordealist.com that track with those videos pretty closely and go into more detail on all the different steps. So to have a trailer of this size, you're going to need to have some basic electronics, including, well, particularly uh, tail lights. So you need to have turn, running lights, and brake lights wired up. So that's why you need to install a, at least a pretty basic electrical system for the trailer. You can do that with a four pin connector. Um, that's what I had before on the Jeep for um, just when I was going to take a, you know, I, I rented some trailers in the past. So as long as I had the four pin, that was enough to take them out. However, a four pin connector uh, is pretty limited. You can only do, you know, like brake lights. Um, I think that may be it. Maybe some other small electronic stuff. But I decided to put a seven pin connector on this trailer. Um, a seven pin connector lets you have an auxiliary power cord also or power line. So eventually I'm gonna install a, um, a built-in battery system on this so that I can power, you know, um, like pumps and a, an overland fridge, things like that. So I wanted to have that option. Uh, also this trailer, the Timberin axle suspension has um, brakes, brake hubs, electronic brake hubs. So I also wanted to wire up the brake hubs. I'm actually not sure off the top of my head if, if the four pin connector lets you run brakes. I'll, I'll look into that and um, check the article on ordealist.com on this section where I'll, I'll clarify that. So the first thing I bought for the trailer electronics wise was the seven pin connector, which um, plugs into a seven pin outlet on the Jeep. I actually had to replace the seven pin out the trailer wiring harness on my Jeep, um, which was a four pin with a seven pin, which is a whole other story. It's very vehicle dependent, um, depending on what kind of make model you have, you'll have to find a, um, you know, different wiring harnesses to set up your vehicle for towing. So the seven pin wiring harness I got essentially has a like tether that plugs into the Jeep. Then that wire comes back to a bus box. And then from that bus box, which is really just a series of uh, different little metal um, leads that you can screw wires onto, then those actually go out to the different um, components, electric components on the trailer. Pin here, the plug that goes into the Jeep. So I've put the seven pin connector on the Jeep and then that comes out to this tether, which comes down the tongue of the trailer to this junction box. That's where all the different elements in the trailer are wired up. I'll probably add a line to go for auxiliary power at some point. Um, got the ground here, which I did with a um, uh, rivet nut. On the seven pin connector, there's, um, you know, the different pins inside the connector actually connect to different aspects of your, your vehicle's wiring. So if you hit the brake, it sends a signal through the brake line, which then connects to the brake line on the trailer. Um, same with the turn lights, the, um, you know, the brake, the brake lights. Um, and if you have auxiliary power to those as well. Really mounting the seven pin harness to the trailer was pretty easy. I just used, drilled a hole and I actually used um, uh, rivet nuts, which are a type of nut that just, ins they're, they're good for um, blind, um, in like where you need to bolt something to a place where you can't get to the backside of it. So I was drilling and mounting my um, the bus box onto a piece of square tubing, the frame of the trailer. Um, I didn't want to drill all the way through. It seemed like overkill. So I could put a rivet nut through one wall of the tubing and then 
use a bolt to screw the bus box down into that rivet nut. I found a, found a pretty good rivet nut tool. I think it's called an Astro. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. You have to be careful when you're using uh, rivet nuts on thicker tubing. Uh, it's pretty easy to break the mandrel, which is the threaded end of the rivet nut tool. I did that a couple times. So you just have to, you know, kind of be careful about how you do it, not, not squeeze too hard on the tool. Once I had the bus box for the seven pin connector attached to the frame, I attached the brake lights I bought, the tail lights, to the bumper, we'll call it, of the trailer. Uh, that was pretty simple, it was just drilling holes into the bumper, and I actually used rivet nuts for the attachment points, and then I had a center hole that I drilled so that the wires from the tail lights could come through the bumper. Then I ran uh, wiring from the bus box at the bus bar at the front of the trailer back to those tail lights. These are the lights I'm going to use. There's wires that come out of the back. So I'm gonna run those through this hole. And then this is where the uh, rivet nuts will go. I didn't actually run the wiring through the frame of the trailer. I may do that later, but for now, I was kind of reluctant to drill into the trailer frame. I'm trying to introduce as few holes in the frame as possible to prevent corrosion. Um, so what I did was I ran the wiring around the side of the trailer and then I held it down with some uh, fasteners that stick to the frame and zip ties. I put the wires inside of a protective um, loom, plastic loom that's split on one side so it's easy to put the wires inside of it and I ran that loom all the way around to the back. In places where um, I didn't have the loom. I actually taped the wires up with some protective electrical tape. Loom and kind of wind around the trailer. Just zip ties and these little um, sticky things that are made for zip ties to attach to. And that comes down here. And then it drops under the trailer right here. And goes down to the brakes. See this wire runs over to that brake. This is the loom here that contains the tail light wires. And that comes all the way over here and then comes into a hole in the back of the bumper. And then here are the lights. Connecting the wires is pretty simple. I use these butt splices in a lot of places. Um, they're waterproof, so you just put, you know, the end of one wire on this side, the end of the other wire on this side, then you crimp it uh, with a, a crimping tool. It's basically just a wire stripper, cutter, crimper tool. And then these are waterproof, so you can heat them up and they'll shrink around the wire and um, protect the, the junction here. In some places I used quick disconnect connectors to um, put the wires together. Um, this is in places where I thought I might need to take the wires, disconnect the wires down the road for maintenance reasons. Uh, for instance, the brake wires, I did that in case I need to work on the brakes later and take them off. That way I don't have to cut and rewire everything. I can just pull them apart. One thing that was really helpful um, in wiring the trailer was that the, the junction box with the bus bar that comes um, from the seven pin connector is, is actually colored. They're, the, each of the, the little poles inside that you connect the wires to has a, has a color. Um, and that corresponds to different uh, areas on the pin. And there's a guide that came with the, um, with the seven pin connector that I got that tells you what each of those colors corresponds to. So for instance, the blue, um, the pin that is, um, has a blue wire um, corresponds to the brakes and it shows you where exactly on the, the seven pin connector that, that pin is. And then you know when you look into the junction box that the blue uh, pin there is the actual brake pin. What I did was I bought some 14 gauge wire online and I got it multicolored and the colors match up with the colors on the seven pin connector. 
so that I could run um, the same color to um, from the junction box to the component and know that you know when it gets back there the blue wire is the brake wire and the red wire is the brake light wire for instance. One tricky part was the tail lights that I bought didn't have uh, like a clear um, wiring diagram that came with them. It was just you know three wires I think two red and one white or one red, one blue, and one white, something like that. So, and I couldn't find it online. You know, it's it's a pretty like basic light, um, kind of generic. Uh, so it was a little tricky figuring. It took me a few tries to like get the connections right and get everything wired up so that the brake light and the running light and the um, turn signals all worked correctly. Okay, that's it for this video. I did want to break off the electronics just because it seemed to be a discrete sort of topic and it was intuitive. I am going to add more um, to the electrical system of the trailer down the road, which I'll cover. I, I want to add an auxiliary battery and um, something that could power an overland like fridge freezer, uh, maybe some water pump, a water pump, things of that nature. Um, it would be charged from the Jeep, the Jeep's alternator and also potentially by solar panels. In the next video, I'll cover sort of the odds and ends that were left for completing the trailer. Um, I actually, once I had the electronics wired up, I went to, um, I, got the, I got the trailer inspected. I hooked it up to the Jeep and drove it to the um, local DMV and went through that process, which was interesting. Um, I had to get a VIN number and I had to get it registered and you know the DMV doesn't know what to make of a DIY trailer so it was an interesting adventure. I found some good information online um, which I'll also share in the um, in the links below and also on the um, articles on ordealist.com. Once I had it registered then I added some other things like I added the, um, the roof rack and the tent um, I built these towers for the awnings. Um, and I'll, in the next video, I'll cover all that stuff. I'll also cover sort of some of the odds and ends and maybe talk about some of the lessons learned while I was building this thing. Um, or maybe I'll break that off into a separate video. We'll see. See how much uh, all the other odds and ends take up in the next video. Anyway, like I said, there's uh, links in the description below to all the videos in the series, as well as article, uh, the articles on ordealist.com. And um, please check them out, and I hope this has been helpful. Cheers. Hmm. Yeah, that's good.